Now I'll talk about uh, what sometimes seems to be cruel uh, and what sometimes seems to be compassionate. Uh, it's not exactly so. Uh. Mm. Okay, the first one uh, is sometimes uh, you have to be cruel to be kind. Uh, especially parents with their children. Uh, if the children need a spanking, uh, give them a spanking. Mm, that's actually kind, it's not cruel. Of course, uh, a small boy, when you spank him, uh, he, will, he will not think that you are kind to him. Uh, but that is uh, actually uh, being more kind than unkind. Now, the Buddha said uh, that uh, if a person conducts himself well in body, speech and mind, uh, then uh, even though he says, he hates himself, uh, actually uh, he loves himself. But if a person misconducts himself uh, in body, speech and mind, uh, even though he thinks that he loves himself, uh, actually he hates himself because he's causing himself suffering, either now or in future. Uh, for example, if a person breaks the precepts, uh, for example, he cheats. Uh, he thinks uh, to benefit himself, uh, he cheats the company of millions of dollars. Uh, to benefit himself, but he's actually harming himself, not benefiting himself, and he's going to suffer for a long time in the future. Uh, so such a person uh, does not love himself. Uh, so the Buddha also said uh, that uh, in teaching others, uh, we should use a soft approach, and if it doesn't work, uh, we should use a hard approach, and if, if, if necessary, then the soft and hard approach. Uh, so there was this uh, sutta uh, called the KC Sutta. This KC was a horse trainer, a well-known horse trainer. And one day he came to see the Buddha. And the Buddha knew that he was a horse trainer, so he could discipline horses so well. So Buddha asked him, how do you discipline the horses? How do you train them? Then he says uh, he uses the soft approach like, Meaning, uh, they like to eat sugar cane, they give them sugar cane, and they like to eat sweets, and whatever food they like to eat, uh, he gives them and coaxes them to uh, do whatever he instructs them to do. Uh. Then he says, uh, if this doesn't work, uh, then he uses the hard approach, uh, either whip them or take the gold stick, uh, poke into their skin. Uh. And then the Buddha asks, what if the uh, the soft approach and the hard approach doesn't work. Then he said, in that case, I destroy the horse. In order that they not bring shame to the stable, right? to this master. Then he asked the Buddha, Bhagavan, you are also a trainer, you are a trainer of men. How do you tame your men? Then the Buddha said, I also use the soft approach, I also use the hard approach. Then he asks, what is your soft approach? Then the Buddha says, I explain what is good karma, what is good good conduct in body, speech and mind. And I explain the result of that is rebirth in the heavens or in the human realm to enjoy. Then what is the hard approach? Then the Buddha said, I explain about the three evil karmas, body, speech and mind. And how these three evil karmas uh, bring you to rebirth in the woeful plains, uh, in the ghost, animal and hell realm uh, that is uh, frightening. Uh, so that is the hard approach. And also both the soft and hard approach. Uh. Then he asked the Buddha, what if this doesn't work? Then the Buddha said, then I kill the man. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, I, Bhagavan, you are Arhan, Samasam Buddha, surely you don't kill the man. And then the Buddha said, yes, I in the Aryan discipline, it is death to a man when his teachers or his companions in the holy life refuse to teach him the Dhamma. So, if you have no opportunity to learn the Dhamma, then you are not progressing in the spiritual path. Then you might as well be dead. You are just like a dead man. How can you say that? Right? Because you are wasting your life. Eh? The Buddha says, eh? if you 
live a hundred years yeah, and you don't practice the spiritual path. Yeah. It is better you live one day and practice the spiritual path. In fact, if you live a hundred years and you don't practice the spiritual path, uh, you are going backwards. Because every day in our human existence, uh, we are using our blessings. Day after day, we use our blessings. hundred years later, uh, you are already in the red. Uh. <laughs> the bankrupt business. Uh. <laughs> so that is uh, death in the Aryan discipline. Uh, so that's why uh, if uh, parents, uh, if children, uh, they need to be taught the hard way, uh, give them the hard way. Sometimes they need to be, uh, you need to use a software. Uh, you do your homework. Uh, uh, tomorrow I bring you to McDonald's or something. <laughs> so give the spanking uh, as necessary. Nowadays, uh, uh, the other day, in fact, uh, somebody told me, uh, a lady told me, the husband said, Bhante, I see, uh, to spank the child is out of date. Uh, it's, it's in the long, long, long ago time. <laughs> he said, nowadays nobody spank their children. The father said, nah. but then you see in the West, uh, they don't spank their children. What do they do? They ask the child to go up to his room and lock the room, don't come out. Right? That's one way. Another way, favorite TV program, cannot see. <laughs> These are ways and means uh, to show them uh, you mean business. Uh, right? Uh, so that is uh, need to be cruel, to be kind. Now, the second thing I like to talk about uh, is in the suttas, one day, this big, huge uh, deva by the name of Rahu, is an asura, very huge. One day he caught the moon deva, uh, actually Chandima, he caught the moon deva, was about to kill the moon deva. I don't know why, maybe also eat him up or what. Uh, so this moon deva called out to the Buddha uh, for help. Uh, then the Buddha is not always uh, in deep samadhi. Uh, so the Buddha happened to know. Uh, and then the Buddha responded uh, by talking very loudly to this Rahu, Sasura, asking Rahu to release this uh, Chandima Deva. He said, uh, the Buddha has compassion for beings na, and this Deva has called out to my name, so you release him. Na. So this Rahu, when he heard this loud sound of the Buddha, quickly released this uh, moon Deva and flew back to his uh, Asura heaven. Na and was traveling from head to foot, shaking all over. So the Asura king saw him and asked him, what happened to you? Why are you shaking like a leaf? Then he told him what happened just now. Then he said, if I had not released that Chandima Deva, my head would have split into seven pieces. <laughs> so you see, when the Buddha gives a instruction like that, and they don't... He did that. The head can split into seven pieces. Is that being unkind? That's not being unkind. The Buddha is being compassionate to this Chandima Deva. And he's not causing this uh, Rahu's head to split. If the Rahu did not respond to the Buddha's instruction, his head would have split. That is his own doing. Right? So you see, yeah. Why? Uh, okay, from here you can see maybe uh, why 99.9% .9 of Pachika Buddhas don't teach. If they teach uh, and you don't listen to the Pachika Buddha, great and very bad karma. That's why uh, in the suttas, uh, whenever the Buddha teaches the Dhamma, anybody he teaches to uh, will become a stream enterer. Uh, if that person uh, cannot become a stream enterer, uh, the Buddha will not teach him. Because the Buddha teaches him uh, and he doesn't become a stream enterer, uh, he's creating very, very bad karma. Right? He does not believe what the Buddha says. Uh, right? Uh -huh. And the same thing happened uh, another time uh, with the Sun Deva. Sun Deva also was caught by this huge Rahu. And the same thing happened. Uh, now, in the suttas, uh, we find uh, that one of the previous Buddhas was called Kakusanda Buddha. 
And because he was preaching the Dhamma and bringing people out of samsara, Mara, Satan, was very angry, was, uh, wanted uh, the Buddha to stop his work. So he tried ways and means uh, to stop the Buddha and did not work. Whenever he, he tried, uh, the Buddha would tell his disciples, uh, Mara is trying to do this, Mara is trying to do that, so he don't react. So he found that uh, he could not succeed. Nah. He got so angry. One day when Kakusanda was walking on arms round, uh, this more senior disciple behind him, uh, his Mara got into somebody's body, took a big stone nah, and came from behind and whacked the monk nah, from the back nah, till his head was bleeding all over with blood. Nah. And uh, Kakusanda Buddha probably thought that's enough. Nah. Turned around uh, and stared at him, uh, what is known as the elephant look. Uh. <laughs> stared at him, uh, immediately Mara died and landed in hell. Uh. Is the Buddha being unkind? <laughs> hmm? The Buddha probably thought, uh, you stop here and now. And probably he did not want to stop, uh. he probably wanted to do some more uh, and immediately died. Uh. So in the same case, uh, it's like just now, the Buddha gave an instruction. He stopped doing it. He doesn't want to stop. So he has, he has to reap the natural karma of going to hell. Mm. But it's better for him to go to hell now. Instead of creating some more evil karma against the Buddha and his disciples, and then he'll go to hell for a much longer time, right? Uh, so, who was this person? He went to hell, huh? he was reborn in hell, then he said, huh? that he had a fish head and a human body in hell. And after suffering for a long time in hell, uh, he came back to the earth, to the human uh, realm, and re was reborn as Mahamogalana. <laughs> Mahamogalana, Mogalana the Great. Mm. So the, the um, Mahamogalana was talking about his previous life. Uh. So sometimes uh, we see like this, uh, we you don't have the wisdom, uh, we think, ah, oh, this person acts in such a way, he's not compassionate, he's not so. Now, another thing I like to say yeah, is that in one of the suttas, the Buddha said nah, that, uh, I think somebody asked him, nah, is it better uh, if somebody does something uh, praiseworthy, we praise him, nah, and somebody does something wrong, nah, unpraiseworthy, or some, some big fault, nah, then, uh, instead of uh, seeing, the, the, seeing the truth uh, that this person did wrong and, and all that, uh, that uh, we are more compassionate now uh, if we don't speak ill of others. Uh, the Buddha said no. The Buddha said, uh, if somebody is worthy of praise, we praise him. If somebody is worthy of dispraise, uh, then we dispraise him. The Buddha was uh, very blunt, uh, like all Aryas. Uh, Black is black, white is white. Bo Kong Ing Siu Don't speak sweet words. Uh, so like Maha Kasapa. Maha uh, Kasapa is not very popular uh, with lay people uh, because he's very blunt. Uh, one day in the, in the Vinaya books, uh, uh, this, uh, remember Ananda at that time, remember Ananda was more than 80 years old after the Buddha had passed away. And he was walking with a big group of disciples, about 1,000 monk disciples, and going here and going there. And Mahakasapa scolded him, a small boy. What are you doing walking around all over the place eh? with 1,000 disciples and making it difficult for the lay people to feed you? Because if you walk with 1,000 monks, eh? you go to a place eh, to ask for food. Eh? It's difficult for the lay people to feed. Eh? So you see, he's so blunt. Eh? This member Ananda said, Bhante, I'm old already, my hair is already white. He called me a small boy. <laughs> Again, he shouted at me, small boy. <laughs> so he said, Arahana, so can speak like that. Uh, because uh, um, they are very blunt. Uh, so in the same way, in the suttas, uh, we find uh, that the Buddha scolded this external ascetic leader called Makali Gosala Buddha. The Buddha said that fool, Makali Gosala Buddha, teaching our Dhamma. Because this fellow, this Makali Gosala Buddha, he says there is no karma. 
When you say there's no karma, people can do what they like, right? They're not afraid of any consequences. So the Buddha said this fool Makali yeah, is leading people uh, into the woeful plains. Just like a fish trap now. You know, you, you make all this bamboo and uh, you lead all the fish uh, into the kelong. Uh, and they cannot come out of it. Uh. The Buddha said the same way in this fool. Uh, it's causing people to go into the woeful plains. Uh. So the Buddha also was very blunt. Uh. So also the Buddha also said uh, in the Anguttara Nikaya, that what is Dhamma, we, we should say is Dhamma. What is what our Dhamma against the Dhamma, we should also speak out. Uh, the Buddha said, uh, we should not be afraid to speak out. Uh, but then, uh, if you speak out very often, you are unpopular. Uh, so, the Buddha also was unpopular, actually, during his days. Uh, that's why in the Sutta, the Buddha said, I don't quarrel with the world. The world quarrels with me. He who speaks the Dhamma does not quarrel with the world. So we have to be blunt. Now another one uh, I'd like to talk about uh, is some people uh, like to uh, rescue animals. Uh, that is uh, quite good. Uh, but then it's one of those things uh, that uh, we can't help very much. Uh. You know, we have this SPCA, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Their aim uh, is very good, very noble. In England, they call it Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They rescue the dogs and the cats and all the animals that are endangered. And they keep them uh, hoping that somebody will take it uh, and take care of it in their homes. But then, uh, you know what is happening? Like in SPCA in Kuala Lumpur, they rescue and they have so many cats and dogs uh, in the pen that they cannot manage. So if you bring them... uh, cat or a dog, uh, after a few days, uh, like one week, uh, nobody comes to take it, uh, they will put it to sleep. So when they put it to sleep, uh, what are they doing? They are creating very evil karma. When it comes to that stage uh, where they have to put it to sleep, uh, it's better don't do it. Right? It's just like some people, they want to pray to heaven uh, to, to get married, and they go and slaughter an animal and, and pray. They want to get married, but they are getting demarried, the Buddha said. So in the same way, people like this SPCA, yeah, they want to get married, but actually they are getting demarried. I have one supporter whose cousin works in the SPCA. She went to work there because she loves animals, kind to animals. But after working there, she finds that she has to tell the worker which animal to put to sleep. And every time she does it, her tears in her eyes as she simply point this animal, that animal. Uh, so, if it comes to that stage, uh, don't do it. Uh, 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 the other thing is, some people uh, think uh, spaying is cruel. Uh, a few months ago, there's one lady from police phoned me, you know, and she said uh, there were two stray female dogs outside her house. So out of kindness, uh, she took them and fed them, fed them, and eventually became her dogs. And every now and then, they give birth. She has to go and find people to give the puppies to. Uh, and after some time, people scared of her. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Always approaching with the puppies. They see her, so run away. <laughs> so much so, uh, she said, I lost what to do. Uh. So her friends, you know, told her what? Friends say, yeah, I, uh, you beside them, uh. <laughs> cannot spare. Uh. You bring it to the marketplace, go and release it. Uh. Release it. Uh. You will find food in the marketplace. Uh. Can a dog find food in the marketplace? Uh? Even if there's food in the rubbish bin, uh, you have gla- broken glass, you have bro- uh, nails and all that. Uh. Uh. And then, you know, dogs have their territory. If you bring a dog to another dog's territory, uh, you'll get bitten. So very often, uh, these stray dogs uh, get bitten all over. And it's very common to see a stray dog uh, with a wound at the back, uh, big wound uh, with a lot of maggots. The maggots are eating at the flesh. Uh, it's in great pain. Uh, that's what happens uh, if you release a dog. Uh, so how can you release a dog? So the most compassionate way is uh, to spay the dog. Don't be afraid, I, tell, I told her. It's not cruel to, to, to spay a dog. How much pain? 
Even human beings also go and spay themselves, isn't it? <laughs> so that they don't give birth anymore, isn't it? Not only women, men also do it nowadays. Right? Uh, so I'm compassionate about it. In fact, that's the most compassionate way. In Timur, where our monastery is, uh, we have a lot of dogs all around because we have a lot of these fish ponds, you know. And they keep the dogs uh, so that people don't come and steal the fish. But they never spay the dogs and they multiply so much. Uh. And then, uh, every now and then, uh, you hear the female, uh, the, the bitch, uh, on heat uh, and gets bitten by all other dogs. Always crying. Uh. And I think that's pretty cruel. Our dogs uh, are spayed uh, and they live comfortably. They rich. <laughs> never get bothered by other dogs uh, until they're so fat. <laughs> Oh, Spain is not cruel. And then nowadays in Mahayana, Buddhists uh, like to practice liberation of animals. Also, that was not encouraged by the Buddha during the Buddha's time. Uh, nobody practiced liberation of animals. Uh, because uh, it, I've been in Mahayana Buddhism for nine years and I've seen a lot of liberation of animals. And I find it's not really practical. Because uh, a lot of times, uh, for example, birds, when they release the birds, uh, they've been kept in the cages for so long, either they don't know how to fly, or I've seen uh, sometimes they fly on only, on only about 10 feet. Uh, some can fly higher. But there was one time uh, when I was in Lunas, and somebody came and said the sister is dying of cancer, so she wants to bang uh, she wants to liberate three pigeons. She brought three pigeons. So he wanted to give me to liberate, so I released the pigeons. One fell to the ground. <laughs> Second one flew up about 10 feet. Third one flew up about 20 feet. So the one that fell to the ground, I had to catch it and put it in the cage. The next day, the one about 10 feet fell to the ground. Because I had no food to eat the whole day. So it so weak, it fell to the ground. Then I saw the cat coming quickly, caught it, put it in the cage. The day after that, the one twenty feet up there fell to the ground. <laughs> because they have been in the case so long, they don't know how to find food. Uh, as a time also, some people, uh, when I was living on, on Penang Hill uh, in the cave, uh, somebody brought pigeons also to release. And some flew, and some dare not fly out also, want to stay in the case. Uh, they feel safer in the case. <laughs> And I've seen also when I was in America, they release a lot of birds, you know. A few days later, uh, we find the birds' feathers on the ground. Because uh, there's a lot of eagles around. And these uh, pigeons, uh, they don't know where to hide. So they're easy prey for the, for the eagles. And sometimes they release the tortoises. They buy the tortoises, they release in the river. And then a few weeks later, uh, you find the shell of the tortoise. <laughs> because it's not, it's not used to that place. It doesn't know how to find food in that place. And the place is so rocky. And, and it's not the right place to release it. Uh, tortoises, uh, they need a place where there's a lot of plant life. Uh, I don't know, shelter. But there's no plant life there. Mm-hmm. At the time they uh, were staying in Seattle, they released uh, one tortoise in the garden thinking it would be safe like, in the garden. A few days later, I smelt it, the uh, cops got killed by a badger. Uh, so, so a lot of the times, uh, liberation uh, is not practical. Uh. Well, of course, if you see somebody uh, about to slaughter a uh, sikachua, iguana or something, uh, you can buy and uh, liberate it. And the last one uh, is meat eating. Uh, a lot of people uh, think uh, that it is cruel to eat meat. But the Buddha did not uh, encourage uh, vegetarianism uh, because the Buddha's were practical. In fact, one of his disciples, Devadatta, asked the Buddha to make a rule uh, so that all monks uh, should only eat vegetarian food and the Buddha said no. The Buddha said, uh, uh, meat that has three conditions uh, is pure. Uh, if you do not see, you do not hear and you do not suspect uh, that the animal was purposely killed for you, uh, then there's uh, no evil karma in eating the meat. Uh, because when we eat the meat, uh, for example, you go to the market and you buy uh, pork, uh, it's already slaughtered, or fish uh, already dead. Uh, 
you are actually uh, not uh, causing the death of those animals. Uh. But a lot of people think uh, because we eat meat, then uh, people slaughter more animals. But uh, they fail to realize uh, that uh, even if the whole world became vegetarians, uh, there will still be slaughter of animals, uh, killing of animals. Uh. Because, for example, now dogs uh, without licenses, uh, the government employs people to shoot kill them uh, because if they multiply too much uh, then they will have rabies and they will bite people and all that uh, so the uh, government finds it necessary in fact I think uh, last year well, in China there was a place uh, where the dogs were biting people and they had to shoot all the dogs uh, so the same with other animals uh, if we allow them to multiply they will multiply so fast uh, that they will be eating all the crops and walking on the streets and all that uh, uh, so they will still be eliminated. So only thing is the this is uh, the world itself is cruel. We cannot change the fact uh, that the world is cruel. That's why the Buddha said uh, uh, the world is dukkha. In fact, in the Bible, the Bible says that uh, the world is cruel. Mm. So Buddha only told us uh, to be careful uh, not to have the direct karma of killing. The indirect karma uh, we cannot help. Uh, even staying in a house, uh, you are contributing to uh, more housing estates being created. When they want to create a housing estate, uh, they have to bulldoze the land, clear the land. A lot of animals die. A lot of people, a lot of animals cannot survive. Not because you want to use electricity, uh, government builds dams. Uh, and when they build dams, uh, the river is flooded. Uh, a lot of animals die. Mm. Same uh, when, because you want to use household items. Uh, and uh, factories are made, they have to clear the, the, the forest, etc. Uh, now this is, uh, this uh, argument uh, that because we eat animals, uh, more animals are slaughtered. Uh, if that is valid, uh, then uh, we cannot sit in cars, uh, we cannot drive cars, uh, because uh, according to statistics, uh, every day uh, 2,000 human beings uh, are killed on the roads uh, every day, and countless animals. Uh, so if we make more cars and more vehicles, uh, more people will be killed, right? So are you contributing the death to more people? Uh, in fact, I thought of one uh, simile. Uh, you know, if there's a serial killer and then uh, around and he has killed many people uh, and then all the people in the town be afraid to go out at night and they ask the police to catch the man. So after much investigation, uh, the man is caught. Then he's tried and then sentenced to death. And then he's hanged, for example. Now, this man has to die. Okay, who has the biggest evil karma? If you really think about it, uh, it's actually the hangman. The hangman who actually hangs him. The second uh, is the judge. Of course, the hangman can say, uh, I'm only doing I only chari makan to feed my wife and children. I didn't sentence him to death. The judge not sentence him to death. And then the judge will say, I only sentence only I didn't I didn't do the act. You were the one who did the act. <laughs> uh, so the second uh, most evil karma is the judge. Policeman. Policeman no evil karma. How about you? Actually he has to die, yeah, because of all of you. Right? To safeguard all of you, uh, he has to die. So you all got sin. Uh? <laughs> Ultimately, uh, it's for all of you uh, that he has to die. You know? uh, but you have no evil karma, even though you contribute to his death. So in the same way, when an animal is killed to feed human beings, uh, the most evil karma is the person who does the slaughter. The person who slaughters the chicken, or slaughters the pig, etc. The second most evil karma is the person who rears the animal uh, to be slaughtered. Because from the from the beginning, uh, he already has this idea in mind uh, to sell it to be slaughtered, right? But the person who eats the slaughtered meat uh, has no evil karma. In the same way. Uh, mm. So it's a very good simile. Uh, mm. So I shall end here. Okay, if there's no question for the time being, uh, I'd like to say something that um, the Buddha asks us uh, to practice the spiritual path, uh, right? Get out samsara. 
but not everybody uh, can practice a spiritual path. Why? Because we are all at different levels, all at different levels. Spiritual maturity uh, is different. Mm. So those who are spiritually mature, uh, ready to practice a spiritual path, uh, they will practice a spiritual path either as a monastic or as a lay person. But there are some people, uh, their blessings is so low that they cannot practice. Uh, they try to meditate and all that, their minds very disturbed, uh, they can't do it. Uh. Such people, uh, they need to create more good karma by going to good deeds. Uh. For example, there are some people who work with this search organization, uh, do charity, help others. And some people do social work and all that. That's good. Uh. Mm. If you can't practice a spiritual path. But if you can, uh, don't waste your human life. Because human life is very difficult to get. And this work uh, that you do uh, to help animals and all that, uh, actually the merit is very little. In the long run, uh, it doesn't help you very much. And you can't help these animals very much also. That's why the Buddha said uh, in the one of the suttas, uh, the Buddha said a uh, long time ago, uh, he was a Brahmin uh, who did a lot of dana. So much dana, he said uh, that uh, he gave away uh, 84,000 buckets of gold, 84,000 buckets of silver, 84,000 buckets of precious stones, and 84,000 uh, chickens, uh, lamb, uh, uh, cattle, etc. And uh, clothing and cloth and all these things. And the food and the drinks that he gave away, uh, he said, uh, flowed like the river. And he said, in spite of all that, uh, his uh, merit uh, was negligible, very small. Why? Because the people who received it uh, were all putujana. No Arya around. Or Putujana. So the, the Buddha said uh, he, he would have been greater merit uh, if he had just given to one stream enterer, meaning a first path attainer. And the Buddha said uh, even giving dana to 100 stream attainers, uh, first path attainers, uh, is less uh, than the merit uh, of giving to one sotapanna, one fruit attainer. Uh, so in other words, uh, this uh, first path attainer doesn't exist for one moment, or, or only one moment. Uh, he exists uh, for, for many years. Uh, that's why the Buddha said uh, that you can do dana to a first path attainer, but even you do it to 100 stream Attainers uh, is less than the merit of giving to one fruit attainer, the Sotapanna. And giving dana to 100 Sotapanas uh, is less than the merit of giving to one second path attainer, etc. Uh, so you see uh, from here uh, that actually uh, if we give to we help uh, all these animals and all these putujana, the merit actually is not very great. Mm -hmm. And since it is so difficult to get a human body, uh, if you can meditate, if you can practice the spiritual path, uh, don't go and do these things uh, because uh, in the end uh, it doesn't help very much. Uh. It's not that it's not good, it's good. But then uh, for yourself, uh, if you pity others, uh, you must also pity yourself. Uh, right? Uh, you continue to do this, uh, you'll be in the round of rebirths for a very, very, very long time. If you have the chance to hear the true Dhamma, try to get uh, to attain uh, the stream entry. Once you attain the stream entry, uh, you've got the most precious thing you can get in this world. So that uh, you're on your way out of suffering, out of, out of samsara. Uh, so only those people uh, who can't practice meditation, who can't hear the, the sutta. There some people's minds are so disturbed, uh, they, they cannot hear the suttas. You know? Some time ago, many years ago, I had one old supporter, I told me about this auntie. 
His auntie had such a nasty temper, such an unpleasant person, partly because uh, of the distribution of uh, property uh, and a grudge against the other relatives, uh, always cursing the other relatives. You know. So because he was such, she was such an unpleasant person, so nasty, uh, that the children uh, in her old age uh, put her in the nursing home. Uh, and even in the nursing home, uh, she would get into tantrums. Uh, so, rage, uh, such a rage, and uh, nobody can control her. So one day, when she was so old, uh, about to die, or this, she got into one of these rage. And they had to call the doctor and give her a jab, tranquilizer, so that she could sleep. Mm. And then, then they phoned the children to come. So three children went to that nursing home. And this old supporter of mine, uh, he happened to drive past the nursing home. He saw the cousin's cars there. And ah, before I come to this, uh, actually, because this uh, old lady uh, had such a nasty temper and was such an unpleasant person, uh, this old supporter of mine uh, tried to help the auntie uh, to give her Dharma talks to listen and to uh, Asked her to do some chanting, a simple chanting, just Namo Tassa, Bhagavato, Arahato, Samasa, Buddhasa. But when she tried to do the chanting, she tried and tried. She could not even chant Namo Tassa, Bhagavato. She tried until the tears came down. And she told the, the, the supporter, I said, don't ask me to chant. I cannot chant. Kama so bad, I cannot even chant the Buddha's name. So, okay, coming back to that part now where this old supporter of mine, drove past the nursing home and saw the cousin's cars there. So he stopped the car, ran into the nursing home, thought the auntie had died. I went into the room. There were a few of them in the room, or six of them in the room, and he saw the auntie there. He got a shock because the two teeth came out, the two Dracula teeth came out so long. And they tried to close the mouth. They could not close the mouth because the teeth were so long. And they could see the teeth for two days, you know until she died. The moment she died, uh, the teeth disappeared. That means uh, she had already turned into that type of ghost, that fierce ghost because of her character, so fierce. Uh. So you see, such people like this, uh, don't ask them to meditate. <laughs> they sting your breath. Uh. Even chanting also cannot. Uh. Uh. So the only thing we can do uh, is to do good deeds. Uh. Do good deeds. So some people are so low huh, that they have to do good deeds huh, to progress spiritually. But if you can progress spiritually, huh, don't waste your time. Huh? Our life is very short. You don't know when we are going to die. Huh? So the Buddha says uh, all of us have cancer. The problem is, since the doctor didn't say, huh, we don't believe. Huh? <laughs> We don't really believe that we have cancer. We think we still have a long time. But the Buddha already warned us, all of us have cancer. Anytime we can die. Uh, don't, don't waste our life.